Hello again, my friends. Thank you for joining us on this Artisthood of the Traveling Pores collaboration. We thought it would be fun to try one technique, but come up with a lot of different results. That is what I love about fluid acrylics. You can give three different artists the same colors, tell them to do the same technique, and you will get anything but the same results. That is why it's so addictive. So I wanted to show you my colors real quick. I'm starting out with golden iridescent pearl fine. And then we're moving on to also golden, the Q word, quinacridone nickel azo gold or QNAG. Uh, that color is just so versatile depending on what you put it next to. It is a gorgeous color. If you haven't tried it, try it out in your next painting. You're going to fall in love with it. Next up is a delicious color that so many artists are using now. I know Arteza ran out of it there for a while and we were all in panic mode, but they got some back and we were all happy once again. This is Bordeaux Red from Arteza. Another color that if you have not tried it, it is absolutely beautiful. Now you've always got to throw some gold in the mix somewhere. That bling is just a die for. So I added some DecoArt Americana 24 karat gold. And it really, really gives the piece some pop at the end. Now next up, we've got Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue, which is a lovely, lovely shade of kind of a blue teal. That's the only way I can describe it, but it's metallic, so it's got some nice, ooh, do you hear that thunder? It's got some nice uh, shimmer to it. So what I do is I mix my paint with Golden GAC 800 first, get it all nice and mixed up. And I don't know why I do it in the order that I do. It's just how I've done it. But um, I then add the Liquitex and the Golden Gak 800 was probably about a part. The Liquitex is about a part to one and a half parts. But the reason I'm showing you is my good friend Bridget Martella wanted me to display how I mix my paints sometime. And it's been a while since she requested that. So Bridget, this is for you, sweetheart. I'm adding my Floetrol, and that is gonna be about two to two and a half parts per one part of paint. And after all that mixing, it is pretty darn close to where I need it to be. And we are ready to go. I can't thank Garrett Brown enough for inviting me to do this with him and for giving me the liberty to invite some other artist friends to join us as well. This has been so much fun. I hope you have um, been able to take something away from one or all of the videos, maybe an aha moment that you didn't realize. Um, it, it is our legitimate pleasure to be able to put these videos out for you guys. Um, we hope you learn something from it. If anything that, uh, you know, be creative, uh, use your imagination, step outside of the box. Your, your paintings don't have to look like everyone else's. 
you will find your own style and uh, as my friend Kathleen Osmore says, your own jam. Um, that's what you're ultimately looking for. So if you're doing a piece and it doesn't come out the way you may have seen it in another video, um, that's okay. It's still an original and it's an original from you. And that's all that matters. Now I'm going to be pouring this and tilting it in real time. Most of my videos are not in real time. Uh, they're sped up by two. But I want to show you truly how patience is your friend when it comes to fluid acrylics. You don't want to rush it. Um, rushing it will just not get you the results that you want. So be methodical, be detailed, and take your time. There is no reason to hurry. The results will speak for themselves when patience is your friend. Now I did a second cup here and I think it was always my intent to do a second cup but I'm glad I did because there's an area right there where you can see uh, the red and it kind of turns a little bit gray and uh, I just I didn't like that portion of it so that's why I'm taking that second cup and pouring right through the middle of it to kind of brighten it up give it some pop and remember, this is your painting. If there's an area you don't like, you can use your base coat to get rid of it. Uh, or you can, like I did, pour another cup, pour over it, break it up, and see what happens. I have to give a shout out to Sweet Cause, Kathleen Osmore with Cause Creations. This palette was one that she used in one of her classes at the Fluid Art Experience in Dallas in July. And uh, I snuck away, I was supposed to be helping her in her class, and I was, I promise, um, but I, I snuck away <clears throat> for a moment and uh, did a little pour using these colors and fell in love with, with how nicely they played together. So I have uh, enjoyed using this palette a couple of times since then, uh, including this piece. And I am sure I will be using it again in the future. So thank you, Cause, for uh, bringing this palette to my attention. Another reason why I'm keeping the tilting in real time is I want you to watch how that paint moves. If you'll notice, there aren't any colors that are moving faster than the others. And that is where consistency is so important. If one of those colors happened to be thinner than the others, it would cause it to run faster and you would lose your composition, you would lose those nice defined lines um, 
that is why we say consistency is a big key to getting the results that you want. Um, if you noticed at the beginning when I was mixing my paints and stirring them, I was looking at the trace that the paint left on top of the other paint. And as long as those are pretty similar, you're going to get uh, the same consistency on all your paints. But the trace is always a good thing to look for. Or you can do the drip method and uh, you know put some drops on a piece of cardboard, a piece of paper, and watch how fast they drip. Now this is what I meant when I said that Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold is so versatile. Uh, if you noticed where it mixed with the 24 karat gold, it kind of blended into this deep, gorgeous uh, orange color. And uh, in the places that it blended with the red, it just, it just really enhances whatever it happens to be next to. As you can see, she dried beautifully. I went ahead and varnished her and put her in a floater frame for posterity. She is now hanging in the gallery and I hope to sell her soon, fingers crossed. Guys, I so appreciate you being here today. Thank you for joining us on this super fun collab with some super wonderful artists. If you happen to come across someone you hadn't seen before, please subscribe to their channel. The artists on here are just so incredible and diverse, and I can promise you, you're always going to learn something by watching them. It has been a pleasure. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend, and until next time, talk to you soon.